So, you have a new Marvel movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. And I figure this could be our first foray into the world of martial arts, you know, other than that Iron Fist show we did. Uh, no, that never happened. Uh, no, it did. I remember with that guy from Game of Thrones? No, we never did that. So what's the movie? Well, sir, I figure we could do a movie about Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Bracelets. Isn't it Ten Rings? Yeah, but I thought it could look cool if they were worn around the wrists, you know, and I think at a certain point a ring becomes a bracelet, scientifically speaking. Uh, no. No, I think at a certain point a bracelet becomes a ring, but then if a ring expands, it's always a ring. That sounds like it makes sense. Okay, ten rings it is. Amazing. So what happens in the movie? Well, we're gonna meet Chung chi right? But he calls himself Sean, and he lives in San Francisco. Okay. And he's friends with this girl named Katie, and they work as valets together. How do we know they're best friends? Because one of her first lines is, we've been friends for ten years. Oh, best friends love stating how long you've been best friends with them. Yeah, they do. So they're in love, I imagine. I mean, one's a boy and one's a girl. No, they're actually, they're just friends. Okay. Okay, so anyway, one day they're taking the bus together and Shang-Chi gets attacked by a bunch of assassins. Oh no. Yeah, so he's gonna suddenly reveal that he's like an insanely good martial artist and he's gonna have this incredible fight scene with them on this bus. Yeah, he's fighting some bad guys on a bus. Yeah, they're like doing martial arts and he's using the environment, you know, he uses his jacket at a certain point. Oh, a relatively grounded, well choreographed fight scene? That's actually refreshing. And the bus's brakes get cut and Katie has to drive the bus and Shang-Chi dives and the bus gets cut in half. Oh, there's the Marvel over the topness. Okay, gotcha. So Katie's like, hey, what's up with you secretly being a martial arts master? And he's like, yeah, I'm secretly a martial arts master, and I gotta go see my sister now. Oh, he does? Yeah, see, he got this postcard that he thinks is from her, so he needs to fly to China because he thinks she's in danger, too. Gotcha. So he's like, bye, Katie, I gotta go. And Katie's like, no, I'm coming with you. Oh, best friends love coming on dangerous adventures with you off of little to no information. Yeah, they do. So wait, why is Katie going? So we can have some comic relief around that people can explain things to. Oh, very helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what happens when they get there? Well, we're gonna meet Shang-Chi's sister, Sha Ling. And what's her deal? Well, after their mom died, their father, Wen Wu, put Shang-Chi through torturous, brutal training for years, right? That's terrible. Yeah, but she wasn't allowed to train with the men, so, you know, it was pretty unfair to her. Yeah, I mean, what a jerk of a father. How come she doesn't get the brutal torture? Oh, wait, I don't know how I feel about this morally. So since she couldn't train with them, she watched them and taught herself how to be even better than them. But how could she learn like the grabbing moves and stuff? Wouldn't she need people to practice with? No, not even. Oh, okay. So anyway, it turns out that Shang-Chi receiving a postcard was actually a setup by his father and he has them both captured. Oh no. Yeah, so they head to his place because he wanted to basically reunite the family and he thinks he knows how to bring their mom back from the dead using these pendants and a map and stuff. Wait, so why did he send assassins after them? Oh, well, he says he knew they wouldn't be able to kill his children. So then why try? So we can have some fight scenes in the movie. That's a good point. So what's this guy's deal anyway? Oh, uh, well, he's 4,000 years old. Oh, my God. Yeah, and he has these ten rings, and he leads a group called the Ten Rings. So what do these rings do, exactly? Oh, all kinds of stuff, sir. They make you immortal. Also, other things involving energy or something. Oh, that's pretty vague, man. Yeah, this way they can do whatever I want them to do from scene to scene. Smart. And so he's actually the real Mandarin, and that Trevor Slattery guy from Iron Man 3, that was his doing. Oh, man, I love that we can retroactively make our unpopular decisions seem calculated and deliberate and important. It is pretty sweet that we can do that, sir. And so what are we saying the Ten Rings organization does exactly? Oh, they've been doing stuff for thousands of years so immense you can't possibly fathom it, but also vague enough that you probably wouldn't have heard of it. Gotcha. God, how many underground organizations that secretly control everything are there in the MCU at this point? Thousands. Wow, yeah. Maybe we should find a new thing. No. Okay. Anyway, so Wenwu explains that he's been and getting these messages from their mother from the grave and Shang-Chi's like, Dad, she's gone. You sound crazy. He doesn't believe that his father may have stumbled upon something crazy like that? No, sir. He's like, there's no way. You sound insane, Papa. He doesn't think that his 4,000-year-old immortal father could have possibly stumbled upon something in this vein. Doesn't even entertain the idea and he's right. Oh, okay, great. So anyway, all the good characters get put in a cell because they don't want to cooperate. Oh, man, it's going to be hard to get out of there. Actually, it's going to be super 
super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, Xia Ling had already escaped from there, and they're left unguarded, and Trevor Slattery is down there, and he can help them escape. Oh, wow, that is convenient. It is, and Trevor has this little furry mythical creature friend that makes little squeaking noises that only he can understand. How? Unclear. Okay, that's kind of weird, but I guess it could be fun if it's just a couple of, you know, playful, semi-understanding back and forth. The creature's gonna give precise driving directions that are crucial to the plot. Oh, it is. Okay. You see, they need to go to this place called Talo, where their mom is from, but they need to drive through a mythical forest to get there. In a beautiful BMW. Okay, seems like you're probably getting a lot of money to specify that. So they get to this place and they find out that Wenwu's plan is actually really, really bad. Oh, it is? You see, this big friggin' soul-sucking demon called Dweller in Darkness is pretending to be their mom to trick Wenwu into releasing him. Oh, soul-sucking demons are tight. What? No, they're not. You're right, I don't know what possessed me to say that. Anyway, so then Katie's gonna do a couple of hours of archery. Oh, that's nice. Just for fun or for the story? It's so she can have something to do in the third act. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, everything's been pretty much explained now, so at this point in a story, this kind of character either dies or picks up a new skill for the third act. That makes sense. So then there's gonna be this big fight between the people of Talo and the Ten Rings with color-coordinated weaponry. Of course, blue versus red. Fantastic. And meanwhile, Wen Wu's gonna start punching this wall to try to release his dead wife, but he's actually releasing these tiny little soul-sucking demons. Oh no. Yeah, so then all the human characters need to join forces and fight. An army of soulless CGI enemies that the characters can violently kill without the audience feeling weird about it. Exactly. Wow, 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 wow. And then Shang-Chi has to fight his father. Oh, wow, a grounded fight with very personal stakes? That's actually a nice change of- And they shoot colored energy blasts at each other, and a giant demon pops out, and a giant dragon pops out and fights it too. Oh, there's the Marvel over the topness. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, and so Wu dies, and then the next ten minutes are gonna be just whatever the computer is able to render. Oh, they can render a whole visual mess of craziness. Can it be super colored? but also somehow entirely gray. You know it. Amazing. And so then Shang-Chi manages to kill the demon with the Ten Rings and save the day. So what are the Ten Rings exactly? Do we find out? Oh, stay tuned. Oh? Yeah, we're gonna have a post credit scene where it's like, oh, these are probably made out of something that's gonna be important eventually. Stay tuned. Nice. No better way to end a Marvel movie than with a commercial for future projects, and that should about do it, actually. What is that? That's just the Marvel movie checklist. There's a checklist? Of course there's a checklist, and you've done great, my my friend, big messy CGI battle in the third act, secret evil organization, color-coded energy blasts. We got cameos from other Marvel movies. Trevor Slattery, Wong, and Abomination. Does the main character remove his shirt to reveal a six-pack at a certain point? He does, yeah, great physique. Well, fantastic. If we could just add a tease that another Marvel character is off doing something important, that'd be great too. On it. Hey everybody, Ryan here, that's me, thanks for watching the video. And if you liked it, feel free to click the like button and the subscribe button and all, you know, buttons of that nature. You can also leave a comment down below letting me know what other movies you want to see pitches for. There are also like hundreds of other episodes on the channel that you can check out if you want. As always, check back soon for a new one. Bye. Bye. Bye.